Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got big changes ahead with the trough setting up out west, creating a severe weather threat, followed by Arctic air and heavy snow going into next week. Good morning everyone, this is your daily update. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. We got a lot to talk about this morning. This first of all, let's talk about all the nice weather that many of you are experiencing, if not very spring-like conditions, and if not record temperatures today, almost 17 of them across the nation with widespread 70s for the Southern Plains. In the midsection of the country, we're talking 80s <laughs> for portions of Kansas and Missouri, where a lot of you guys just are gonna experience some really nice spring-like temperatures and I think that really kind of hangs on for tomorrow as well. For much of the country, you're going to be experiencing well above average temperature as the jet stream is well to the north. The only cool, cooler anomalies are back into the Dakotas, into Minnesota, and the upper Great Lakes regions, and to portions of New England here with those colder uh, temperatures as the jet stream is well to the north right now. But that changes in a big way because let's talk about this. The polar vortex is going to be coming back. Not only is it going to be elongating or kind of stretching out when it does that, that tends to weaken the polar vortex and it tends to push some of that colder air into the United States. But this time it's actually going to be splinting, sending one of those polar lobes in from the stratosphere. This has come way up in the stratosphere. We're talking flying the plane high type <laughs> air mass. That has to travel through the mid latitudes and filter down into the surface because so these things can take a while and it's going to be sending pulses of that cold air starting going to be starting out west but then i think it's going to be intensifying as we go into next week especially into late next week so let's kind of delve into the details here here's the setup on the 500 millibar by the time we get into that friday night time frame we've got a developing trough out here off the west much of the much of the rest of the country is going to be experiencing those well above average temperatures going to be in the warm sector and as this trough really starts to get its act together and that, as it starts to deepen uh, over time it's going to be creating some of those showers and rain sh uh, snow showers as well into parts of the pacific northwest that's going to dive down in nevada getting back in the sierra nevadas with some heavier snow going to be filtering back in for that for them back into places like Flagstaff uh, with the rest of the country is still going to be in those that warm sector waiting for this trough to kind of re, re uh, intensify. So as we move through, this is the low level jet. So we're going to have an active low level jet by the time we get into that Saturday time frame. This is going to be pretty windy along the uh, I-20 corridor here. But as it gets into the midsection of the country, it's going to go what they called negative tilt and to the north of that that's the low pressure system and that's typically where the snow is going to be flying as well so you've got a very strong low level jet it's going to be dig digging across tapping into that warm uh, gulf moisture and those higher dew points you can almost see it uh, a little bit better when we look at the dew points it's just to the north of there this is the upper level low that's going to be right across portions of nebraska into iowa and to the north of there there's your cold front to the south of there there's your warm front in the warm sector so to the north of that line into minnesota into wisconsin here that's where your snow and ice is going to be falling as well to the south of there it's going to be creating that instability and the dew points are going to be tapping into those 50s if not up almost to 60 degree dew points and that's going to cause this cause the uh, some s severe weather to start to break out into portions of iowa in fact the storm prediction center has already highlighted uh that area where the triple point is going to be in portions of kansas city and to des moines and to overland park as well as uh, you know cedar rapids iowa these these areas are going to be under the gun to see in some of those strong to severe thunderstorms on that saturday time frame as when you're in the warm sector for those that you're not in the warm sector you're going to be in the cold sector just to the northwest of that low pressure system underneath that with those that colder that colder trough dig it in that's going to bring the snow showers into the higher elevations and getting back into the rockies going into wyoming here into portions 
of uh, South Dakota into portions of Sioux Falls. I think places into say Minneapolis get some of the ice as well as some of the snow. Uh, so this, you know, to the northwest of this low pressure system, you're gonna have to be contending with that snow and ice. With the, with the southwest wind, that's gonna create the overrunning conditions. And then with the Arctic air pulling from the north, that's gonna create that icy setup uh, with that warm air aloft and underneath that that's going to be where the, the showers and thunderstorms and some of those could be severe side by the time we get under that saturday time frame and as we move through sunday that low level jet is still prevalent it's not going to be nearly as negative tilty as I, I think it's going to be on saturday so as it swings through in the midsection of the country set, setting up setting up over portions of the arklatex into east texas and far western uh, oklahoma as we get into uh, eastern oklahoma as we get into that sunday night time frame we could be looking at yet more severe weather threat within the warm sector because now the upper level jet uh, is going to be along the arklatex here into portions of oklahoma into uh, portions of north texas and east texas Louisiana and Arkansas and Southern Missouri here, you're gonna be in the warm sector uh, by then. And by, by the time we get into that Saturday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night timeframe, uh, you're gonna have that instability. We're gonna be looking at some of those strong to severe thunderstorms setting up over portions of Northeastern uh, Texas and Southeastern Oklahoma, especially in Arkansas, uh, within the Little Rock and Jonesboro area. And I don't, it might creep all the way up into Southern uh, Missouri into portions of uh, Memphis, Tennessee, but definitely be on the lookout for that severe threat as we get into that Sunday afternoon, especially into Sunday night uh, time frame. And then just to the north of there, there's where the, where the, the snow is gonna be falling into portions of the Rockies, uh, you're plenty warm right now in Colorado, but that changes in a big way by the time we get into that Sunday night time frame with snow coming back for the Rockies, snow coming back for uh, Denver with the heavier rains uh, into Oklahoma and the portions of North Texas into Arkansas and to portions of uh, Missouri here as this system will lift well to the north with that icy threat lifting back into portions of Maine and the southern uh, Canada. Uh, by then. So as we get into that Monday time frame, I think we're starting to get pieces of that Arctic air filtering south. It's not Arctic air just yet, but definitely much colder anomaly is going to be filtering in for a good chunk of the country. So we're here experiencing record high temperatures today. That changes in a big way by the time we get into that Monday, March the 7th time frame with a good 20 and 30 degree drop in temperatures of what you see right now and so we could be hard pressed to even get out of the 30s and 40s into portions of oklahoma and then all the way through uh portions of you know, you know into the the mid-atlantic states and portions of the of the northeast here followed by that what with that colder air mass uh, penetrating further south so as we get into that monday time frame that same system will continue to lift off i think the snow by then is going to be replaced from the severe weather threat over iowa it's going to be replaced with snow by the time we get into that Monday time frame. So yeah, we got rapid changes on the way for next week with, with snow breaking out into Iowa. Uh, it'll be over portions of Chicago, getting to the southern of Wisconsin here, going through portions of uh, Michigan here. And to, to the south of here, you could be still under that. Some of these could be severe, but I'm looking at some heavier, if not flooding rains into portions of uh, M M Mississippi, into Alabama, getting into portions of Tennessee, especially into Kentucky, into the Ohio Valley here with this setup. You're gonna be in the warm sector still with that training thunderstorms and to the south of there, it could be some of those could be on the severe side uh, as we get into that Monday time frame over portions of Mississippi, portions of Alabama, as well as uh, Tennessee. But I think the main threat by then is gonna be your heavier flooding rains would be a huge concern by then with very heavy rainfall setting up for this for that area so between now and monday the seventh time frame there's your icy setup i think it originates in portions of sioux falls gets into minneapolis goes through uh north uh, wisconsin here get into portions of michigan uh, into our northern band of of the upper great lakes region and the southern parts of uh, canada 
into uh, Vermont and New Hampshire and portions of Maine here, you're gonna have to be dealing with some of that freezing rain and icy roads set up as it mixes in some with it, some of that colder air. And then here's your snow between now and the next seven days with that trough really setting up out west. This is from now through that Monday, that March the 7th timeframe. We've got heavier snows filtering back into the Pacific Northwest, get it into the higher elevations and to the Four Corners regions and to the, the Rocky Mountains. The initial band is going to be well to the north into portions of South Dakota and to Minnesota, getting into uh, north of uh, Wisconsin here. And then after your severe threat moves through Iowa, you're going to have another band come through once it taps into some of that colder uh, air mass. And there you're going to be laying a snow blanket over portions of Nebraska uh, into portions of Kansas here and the northern portions of uh, Missouri, as well as southern Iowa here into Chicago, into southern Wisconsin, through the Great Lakes and through Michigan. And that'll be like on your Sunday and in that, into that Monday time frame with those snows. And as that system continues to push through by the time we get into the Tuesday time frame, you can actually see the beginning stages of an Arctic air mass. That's a 1043 Arctic air mass. That's some very cold air setting up over British Columbia and the portions of Canada here with snow starting to break out again in that region. You can almost see where the Northwest flow is, where the colder temperatures are gonna be, at, be around by then, but that's just but the beginning stage is a big change is ahead for next week because if we turn back to the teleconnections again. Man, this is an impressive uh, teleconnections. All this data is kind of coming together. First, we've got the polar vortex split. So we've got uh, definitely much colder air coming straight from the stratosphere. And now we've got the teleconnections kind of a setting the stage and kind of coming together. And the, the latest uh, EPO guidance, which is your Eastern Pacific Oscillation, you can actually see it's positive now, which we're, everybody's pretty much well above average, right? But it's gonna take a massive drop and not just one model, all the models say, hey, it's gonna take a massive drop. And by the time we get into that second, uh, you know, week of March, this is a negative four deviation. Basically, the further, further negative uh, deviation it goes, that basically implies the greater prob probabilities of the further south of this Arctic air is gonna be uh, ending up at. And so this tells me this has got a lot of legs with it and this got straight from the polar vortex regions, straight, straight from the Arctic and the teleconnections are already starting to line up and say, hey, we got a lot of cold air coming for the second week of March. And then look at the WPO. So with, with the EPO negative, as well as the WPO, as long as they stay negative, the cold air is gonna press into the United States. And I think it comes uh, next week with rapid changes. So for everybody that's experiencing those record high temperatures this week, is gonna be a, 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 a massive flip in the setup going into next week as winter comes back with a vengeance with much colder uh, temperature anomalies for you know March standards. So as we get into that Wednesday time frame, let's go back up into the upper regions, right? This is your upper air guidance of the 850 millibars. That is some cold stuff, guys, coming from Canada. It's got a lot of legs with it, I think, as, as, as long as the EPO stays negative, the WPO stays negative, this cold is gonna be pressing south the deeper we get into the week next week so yes by the time we get into that wednesday time frame we've already cooled down a, a, a lot from much of the u.s considering where we've been now but we definitely get a lot colder as we get into the middle part of next week and that is going to continue to press southward so looking at the surface map by the time we get into that march uh night time frame this is basically seven days from since i'm recording this video but there's the high pressure. We got a 1043 Arctic high pressure pressing south. So the snow moves back into play into portions of Idaho and to Montana, getting back into the Dakotas again, as this will continue to press south. Let's flip to the ensemble member guidance because we're kind of getting far out there. We're getting past that seven day time frame. We're getting the day eight now. But a lot of the ensemble members are really starting to come together of an Arctic air intrusion for, pushing south so i definitely feel like we got big changes on the table for next week so as we get into that thursday time frame 
that Arctic air will continue to press south, get, reaching into the parts of uh, the midsection of the country, reaching as far south as Texas. Uh, by then, it's going to bring the snow with it. So we could have a reinforcing shot of a good swath of snow into portions of the Pacific Northwest, trailing through, uh, getting into Wyoming, getting back into Nebraska, back into uh, Iowa, getting into the in portions of Illinois and to Wisconsin again, with that cold air continuing to press further southward as we go into that Friday time frame, I think it continues to try to intensify and it'll, with a lot of upper air support, this will be making its way in, in portions of further down south into the Southern Plains and as we get and look at some of the operational guidance, that's this is the latest ensemble member guidance, but this is the latest operational guidance kind of implying that, hey, that definitely lines up with a negative four deviation on the EPO. So this, this, this air mass def, definitely has a lot of legs with it, and it's gonna bring more snow back into places of uh, portions of the Southern regions as well. I think by the time we get into portions of that Friday and maybe even next Saturday timeframe with more snows pulling back into play into portions of the Ohio Valley, getting into the Mid-Atlantic as well as the Northeast. And I do feel parts of these areas are probably gonna be mixed with some potential of snow possibilities as we get into that Friday and next Saturday timeframe. We're just kind of pretty far out by then, but it's got a lot of legs with uh, with the teleconnections, with the polar vortex split, with the teleconnections going uh, southward, with the EPO go guidance and the WP, you know, you know, WPO going both negative. This has definitely got a lot of legs for the second week of March. So hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.